Perry, also known as Jade Knitter, and this is Gadget, who hopefully will not fart his way through this episode. Because if he does, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> um, so it is the 22nd of February, Monday the 22nd of February. Uh, it's actually warm here today which I'm good with and as you can probably tell by the shadows it's getting on in the evening uh, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. so uh, like I said I'm Carrie also known as Jay Dinner and you can find me on Rav Instagram and Twitter all under Jay Dinner uh, and you can find us on iTunes and YouTube under Nitpug, blog is nitpug.com, and come join our group on Ravelry. Um, so yeah, so before I get to the knitting portion of things, he's very satisfied with himself. I bought myself an apple crisp last night. I left it on the kitchen table. It was in a bag, sitting on top of bunch of cans. Yeah, I came home, didn't see anything wrong, uh, twiddled around and finally realized that, wait a minute, the bags kind of flopped open and there's no apple crisp. Apple crisp was on the floor, I guess it had fallen out of the bag, and was about a third eaten. Now, probably not the best thing for him to have gotten into. It's not the worst thing. Unfortunately, Gadget creates clouds of death when he eats apples. I'm hoping the fact that these were well cooked will negate some of it. I don't have a whole lot of hope. So yeah, he's, uh, he's rather proud of himself this evening because he got a third of it an apple crisp before mommy noticed. I'm honestly surprised he wasn't on his back. Oh, I'm full. No, he ate his dinner and then demanded part of mine. Didn't get it, but he demanded it. So, uh, there are no foes. I work on two projects. This is the sweater for Oh my, excuse me. Uh, this is the sweater for my neighbor Rose, and as you can see, there has been progress. There is not as much, there is more progress here than you think, because after last week, I'd gotten to about here, and after last week, I was looking at it, and I realized that the top was really not working. It had, it was actually bunched in quite a bit um, after the, the rib on the end of the garter stitch. So I ripped it back to the garter stitch, put it back on the needle, and got larger needles. So these are quite a bit larger than uh, actually an 11 millimeter, so a US 8, whereas I was using a 6.5 millimeter, which is US 10.5. Um, said 8 millimeter US 11, right? Either way. Um, so yeah, that is what I got redone Friday and Saturday. Yeah, Friday and Saturday. But on Sunday. Um, and I had made an error in the the way I had wanted to do the colors. I'm not, I'm following the colors somewhat from the original. Um, so I've corrected the issue that I had down here with the color, and I'm liking how it turns out. It's turning out. It looks good. It's actually the right size. It's it's going to fit her. Um, so I'm just about halfway done at this point, about halfway up the, um, the body. 
and realized tonight that I probably should check and see if I even have the needles to do the arms because yeah, I probably don't. So we will check that out tonight. So that is one. Uh, this is being done out of... Uh, where's one of the needles? Patton's Classic Wool. There we go. Uh, Patton's Classic Wool Robing. Uh, and I'm liking it. It's uh, definitely something you have to be careful when you're pulling it out of the ball that it's not uh, caught on something because it will just rip apart. Um, but once it's together, it it's good and strong and stiff. And once it gets washed, it'll felt a little bit. It'll felt more over time. But also, upside of sticky wool is when it does come apart, you just tink back a few stitches until you have enough and spit splice it back together. Which is literally you just wet down the part a little bit and then rub the two pieces together until they felt themselves. I normally I'll rub them on my pants. Um, like just do a, a rolling, kind of like you're rolling the uh, rolling of dough. Same thing, only you press a little harder. Until it felts, and then knit, and by the next row it's fine. The other upside of this is all of these massive ends, yep, these are all getting cut out. Snip! They will all disappear. Um, which is one reason why I love when doing color work like this, especially with this multitude of colors. Uh, steaking. The sticking will get rid of the, the end and the few ends that couldn't be brought back to the center. I just kind of spit splice them so there are no ends in here that I will have to deal with once other than the start and the finish. Okay. So that's project number one um, and I've been devoting a lot of time to that. Project number two is I have been working on my ink cardigan. I was attempting to get it to the point where I was um, splitting for the sleeves. I'm almost there. Uh, I'm six rows, I think. Three increases away from splitting for the sleeves. So that's, it's, it's kind of sort of starting to look like a cardigan, I think. Slightly. Uh, but yeah, I'm loving it. And it's it's one of those patterns, it's nice and easy because a lot of it's just straight knitting. Um, and I've had a few people comment, but it's pearl. Yeah. Uh, the bright side is actually all pearled. Well, um, the few people who've mentioned it to me, they've mentioned it because they hate pearling. Well, knit on the other side. So you're gonna purl one side no matter what you do. So it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, so that's that's that. I had a little bit of a freak out moment earlier this evening because um, I was counting stitches and I've just been counting between, uh, I've just been counting the stitches for the front because I'll just take whatever section is the smallest and use that as my stitch count um, because I'm not, there's supposed to be like 500 and something stitches on this when it's done. I'm not counting all 500 and something. So I just take a front um, because there's only one increase. And so what I've done is I'll count, uh, cause it's not increased on, this is the, the open side. So it's the front placket. So it's not increased on this side. So I've counted this and uh, I stick a marker and I'll stick it in at like the on the 20s or whatever normally. Um, in this case it's sitting on 40 stitches. So all I have to do is count between this marker and the increase marker to know how many more I have to do. Well in this case there's 12 stitches here, I need 15 there, three left, three increases left. Well I'm sitting here looking at it going wait a minute I supposed to be counting this part with all the cables? 
No, I'm not. Um, but to double check, I went and counted an armhole, um, which I think I'm actually off, but that's okay. That's, oh my good lord. Oh, he farted. Oh. oh. Yeah, we're sleeping with the window open tonight. I'm very glad it's not minus 40 yet. Uh. So yeah, so that's the start of my ink. Um, and once I finally get to the armholes, it'll actually go a little bit faster because then I'm just doing the body and there's less stitches on it. Um, this is being done out of my, my merino cashmere wool. Um, I got from Webs and I'm really liking it. Still trying to find my ball winder. I know where my Swift is, but I don't know where the ball winder is. I know I brought it because I brought it in the car. I made a point of bringing it with me in the car along with my Swift. Well, it's gone missing. So is my flat iron for my hair. So I'm convinced that the two of them are off cavorting in some closet because I only have two boxes left that haven't been unpacked. They've both been opened. One is full of books. One is full of fabric. Neither of which has a flat iron or a don't back into the lights uh, or ball winder in it. So they're around somewhere. There hasn't been a whole lot else of knitting done. I've been doing a lot of putting Ikea furniture together. Um, an awful lot of putting Ikea furniture together. Almost done. So close. Still have, have one drawer left and the headboard for my bed. And I have my uh, shoe cabinet. And that's it. So. We'll call it three pieces of furniture left. And a friend coming up to stay for the Easter long weekend. <laughs> so it has to be done by then. Um, yeah, this is the other thing that I have been doing. I started this thinking that I would do um, the squircle socks, um, which are squaring the circle is what it comes down to and it's not going to work because the rows on these are too small so it's not going to look the way I want it to so I'm going to do something else I have wanted to do a pair of entrelac socks since I first saw them they're completely entrelac they're out of the book um, think outside the socks and it's by I don't remember who this one's by, um, but I've wanted to do those for quite a while, so I'm going to use this brightly colored yarn to do those. Um, and then the other thing I have is I acquired myself a copy of uh, uh, New Directions in Sock Knitting by Ann Budd, and I am planning on doing a pair of the Oh, what was that? What were they called? What are they called? Um, smoky zigzags. Uh, they're done on their socks. They're done on the perpendicular as opposed to the horizontal. So you're not doing them in the round. You kind of do them up and down, I guess. Um, and they are going to look absolutely fabulous. I'm going to do them out of one of uh, Janet's, so Crazy Dog Yarns, uh, colors. They are going to look absolutely fab. If you want to know how they look in her colors, go look at the, uh, the page for, um, the zigzag socks. Uh, they are by, uh, Natalia Vesa. But yeah, if you go look at the page for the socks, go look up the book and you can see the, the socks. And the second picture, so there are only, right now, I think there's only two pictures. There's one from the book, and the second picture is the one out of Crazy Dog Yarns, out of her sock yarn. 
uh, and it is absolutely fabulous and I have every intention of making a pair of these because I still want some. Um, but yeah, I have to find my Aaron Winder before I do that because I am not under any circumstances uh, one yarn by hand. I did that once already. Nope. Way too much time. So I need to find my yarn, my ball winder. And go from there. Um, that's pretty much it. The only other thing is I'd like to say thank you to those of you who offered to send me needles uh, when I was talking about not being able to find the seven millimeters. Um, I actually did find, oddly enough, a pair of seven millimeters at the Aaron Street. Street. Um, I've completely forgotten that they even sold because uh, they only sell like the, the cheapy ones. So these are the Canadian version of Arrow, uh, which is Prim, or which I think they're uh, a European version. They don't come in, like they don't even list American sizes on them. They only list the millimeters. And I was looking at them because I was looking for uh, an eight millimeter and I'm looking at it going, oh, seven, seven and a half, eight. Okay. So I picked them up, and of course, I picked them up thinking, okay, good needles aren't going to come for uh, a while, so I want to work on this this weekend. I'll pick up needles. Yeah, I picked them up on my way home from work Friday. Guess what was in my mailbox when I got home from work? Yeah, this is a set of high highs. These are the ones I ordered. So, there's that. Um, yeah. But thank you to everyone who offered to send me a pair. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Hi. There is no food on my hands. Um, you cannot still be I think he just wants attention. Like my mom says, he's two. Well, he's seven, but he acts like a two-year-old. So. I'm going to go give the dog some attention and upload this because that's really all I've got to talk about today. And because I'm kind of bored knitting what I'm knitting, there might be some an attempt at uh, Ultralax socks for next week. We'll see. So yeah. Bye. Have a great week, everyone. <laughs>